They missed a lot of tutorials, didn't they? Yeah. It's playing, isn't it? Hmm? Right, it's playing, isn't it? Hmm. Give it a second. Refresh your page. Yeah, we're live now. We were in preview mode for all that. Oh. So none of that got broadcast live, but it was recorded, and I think if people start the video, I didn't get to go live. What a genius. Let's see that. There you go. That's as live as live. Oh my goodness. Does it have a slider bar where you can go back or anything? No. Okay, well maybe when it publishes the video. Oh yeah, we're we're on right now. Um okay. I we I eh, let's finish what we're doing right here first. And then we'll explain to everybody why we had an hour-long live delay because we were actually filming and doing this thing the whole time. I just forgot to hit go live. But thankfully, we were recording at the same time, um, so it doesn't really matter. We'll have the tutorials of what we've already done up. Right now, we're just finishing putting together a left calf um, for the Death Trooper. Um, I've already put down the super glue on the overlap inside. It's already been sanded on both surfaces here. And I'm going to have two clamps handy and Ian to assist me with spraying the accelerator after I've got it lined up, kind of starting at the top here, because you want these to pretty much butt together. So let's start at the top. Put a little pressure on. I don't need you to squirt quite yet. I'm just getting it lined up now. Uh, there's that. It's a lot easier for me if I use my right hand. And I'm going to start walking it down until I get to the middle and put some firm pressure on. Put a clamp right on the end. Okay. And make sure it's still aligned. Come on now. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, that, that, that one is aligned on that one. And up oh, now. Better. There we go. Don't need a clamp. Yeah. I'm just holding it all by hand. Go ahead and squirt the bottom here. There you go. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Let that set up. And I'm going to push the middle, and then you can squirt the middle. There we go. Now push the middle. And go ahead and go across the rest of the top. A little bit more. There we go. Now, that's your alternate method for doing these. Anytime you do this, you need to check your connection. Make sure it's nice and solid. And for reinforcement, that edge, go ahead and run a bead of super glue down the side, trying to let it drain in the crack between the parts. Oop, I got way off for a second. One bead of glue and come behind it and spray. All right, and that's the front. Now we're going to move on to doing the uh, ankle overlap here, and it overlaps from the outside piece to the inside piece. We've already trimmed the back where the velcro is going to go. You do not glue the rears here. Um, I recommend using fuzzy Velcro on this side and doubling it over and then using the rough Velcro on this side from the back. But we're going to install this first. We see how much space we have here, so let's cut off some excess. And we're gluing it in place, sand the surface.
super glue. Let's go ahead and hit this with the accelerator. Line it up from the inside and apply pressure. And there's that much. So, the next thing that we're going to do, wipe off any excess residue here, is drop in the high detail cover strip. It's going to go across there, so like the pencil mark where the super glue will stop. This has already been sanded and flattened on the belt sander, so we're going to sand the outside. Mark here. Super glued it down, pre spray the cover strip, and start aligning it at the top. You want to be right where that overlap seam is and follow it down. Put a little bend on it and push it down as you go. Make sure you stay in line, keep it nice and even. Don't glue yourself to the part. <laughs> And voila! Hello there, Hurricane Wolf. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry about the delays. We forgot to hit go live, and we were broadcasting for an hour. Uh, so we'll have all that recorded in the tutorials we missed later. So there's the application of this. We are going to end up cutting this off uh, and down around the edge. We'll follow it along, the natural shape of everything. Um, so the next thing we want to do is try to make this a little bit more seamless. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to sand the overlap with some 120. So that feathers the edge down a bit, makes a little crack. Wonderful thick super glue is used as a filler. So you can fill that crack in real well. Hit it with the accelerator. Give it a few seconds. Wipe down accelerator again in case any burst up through. And now we'll go through with the sand again. Enforcement dab here. All right, so on to the next parts. We have little nubs, and they go give or take about right there and there. I have not sanded these down yet, so I'm going to run over to the belt sander real quick and sand off the bottoms. They're cast in open mold, so they're nice and shiny, so I take them to the belt sander and flatten them off.
Man, there's nothing quite better than sanding your fingers off on the belt sander. I got a little too deep and it got me. But no big deal. I got super glue all over my hand, so I didn't have a very good grip on the part itself. That's never fun. All right. Now that the bottoms are sanded off, I'll clean up the outside edge just with a piece of sandpaper flat on a table. Make it nice and smooth, get off any little burrs. Anything that takes away from the part. need a pencil you're really going to want to pencil mark these there's no true approximation where they go it's kind of an eyeball test always got to tell you to mm -mm. yours are no no put those back up where you found them there's two red ones over there sorry um look at your pictures look at your reference material on where your placement should be this is give or take about where it should be Nobody should be overly concerned if it's a touch too high or potentially a touch too low. It's not going to make much of a difference in the long run. So, but you do want to make sure that they're even on each side. So I always complete one before another. Do one side to completion. Be careful when you're doing your pencil marks. They do like to shift at times. All right. Now I got that pencil marked it. Now we got that pencil mark in. We're gonna sand inside that area. So we have a nice tacky place, kooky place for the glue to stick to. This is one that I definitely pre-apply the applicator. Super glue smeared everywhere. And line it up to those pencil marks the best you can. And apply some pressure. That'll get that nice and set quick. So we're going to take our other one here. And line it up on the other side. Make sure we're about even and the same everywhere. Nothing looks too funky or is out of place. I got to do this in front of me. I can't do this um, towards the camera. Sorry. No more. Like slide this plastic slick. That's why we have to sand everything before we glue it together. There we go, pencil marks abound. It's already sanded there. I sand a bit in here. applicator and line it up to your pencil marks set it down apply a little gentle pressure while increasing pressure 10 seconds is about a full cure and that'll be good to go while you're there so that's the basics of the left uh, since you didn't see it live before because of our error um, we already did the right and the left here we we did the right one while we were recording and it wasn't live even though we thought it was live the entire time so here is a pair ready for paint the last steps after paint will be to apply velcro fuzzy side back here rough side back here 
to you. You can clamshell it, open it, and close it. All right, so for those of us, <laughs> I can't speak English today. Um, so for those that are tuning in now, we've actually been at it for like over an hour doing stuff. Um, thanks for tuning in now. Now that we're seeing why people weren't commenting and we weren't getting views, we didn't know what was going on. And just forgot to click go live, go live, it happens. Um, so you missed all my awkward introductions of how we're recording this and we're editing some of these down to tutorials later. So we're going to be going through little <sighs> intro outro videos like this. So Logan, uh, my son can edit them down and republish later. We'll have the live videos up. Let's cross our fingers that YouTube has the full live video here. Uh, otherwise it'll take a little bit more time to get the, uh, right calf for the Death Trooper tutorial up, even though it's pretty much the left calf tutorial anyway. It's not a big deal. It's left calf. You don't have to use that. Um, so we're going to do our outro video here and take a break and uh, talk for a second. Right and left. All right. So, hey, uh, thanks for tuning in for these tutorials. This is Mike and Ian from 850 Armor Works. Uh, tune in next time for another great tutorial. We have plenty more Death Trooper tutorials coming up, plus many, many, many more. Not all live streamed. Uh, have fun, have safe, and we will see you next time. Have safe. What in the world is a have safe? That's just pure genius right there. Have safe. So, yeah, I want to take a break for a second because I got super glue all over my fingers right now. I had a little belt sander incident for like the first time ever. Um, whenever I was sanding down those nubs, I had too much super glue on my fingers and I lost grip of it and got a nice little chunk of skin taken and burned off out of my middle finger. It's kind of nice. Um, you don't want to see me scream in agony and pain of acetone washing my hands right now, do you? Yes, y'all do. Y'all must. And y'all can watch Ian also finish up, you know, what I taught him. He's doing the cover strips. He got a knife and sand it down. So this is just one of the absolutely worst things ever. Ah. All right, I can't stand these things. Sorry, we there, there are no children working in the shop to necessitate childproof caps. For our acetone, especially whenever I can't open these things myself. Workplace injuries. Come on, get off of there already. They're almost off. There you go. Now, I'm actually getting my ass toe. Oh, so, are you ready to see a grown man cry? All the cuts on my hands. So how is everybody today with our four viewers? Okay, not crying that bad, not yet. 
but it's not pleasant. All wrapped up? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see him. All righty, you have to stay on the top and do the little super glue thing. Yep, I'm going to do that in a second. And, uh, yep, do the same thing there, and it'll be a lot better looking. Yep. I think we may be able to get those work to work. The calves are skinny enough. Live, only live for 21 minutes. I'm, I just can't get live streaming on YouTube right. Figured it out on Facebook. That was easy enough. Facebook video quality just isn't good. And hopefully we'll be updating these cameras eventually. Whew, dirty. Alright, I'm going to start setting up for the... Oh, what time is it? 11. Yeah, I got plenty of time. I may want to save these thigh tutorials for a full tutorial. Um, because I have a lot of them put together right now. And I'm going to show you the basic parts. Um, they're really, really simple, if you ask me. But then again, I've looked at hundreds and hundreds of them. They're just little overlaps that are glued the outside of each one and you trim them up uh, the real key technical thing is how we glue the rubber so for right now big shout out to big Pete cosplay and his YouTube channel because he has all those tutorials under wraps that were done just six feet over to the right from me where I am right now um, but I will be getting to those We've got a lot of rubber mat to cut I want to jump into these chests and backs and Talk about the nuances and niceties of them. And may have to do a little. <sighs> I'm tired and it's Friday, and yesterday felt like Friday, so today is feeling unmotivated, but I had a plan for today and I need to see the plan for the day to come to fruition. Because yesterday I had to hop around to too many different places doing different things. So I didn't feel like doing that again today anyway. <sighs> it just never stops sometimes. It never stops. But we're still breathing. We're doing good. Things are easing up, I guess, around the world a little. I don't know yet. We just got to take it day by day ourselves. sit around here for a while. Get all nasty dusty. That's why we also did a lot of shop reorganization here to try to push all our dirtier stuff out one side uh, while we're building out the paint booth. See I'm getting ready here to get um, death trooper chests and back assembly started. This will be real easy for me. This will be one for me to start to finish. I'll lay it out and do all these awkward intro videos in a minute. Like that. 
excuse me. Um, I do need to personally go on hold for a second. Let me wash my hands. I got that acetone all over them. Lisa just got in. I don't know if she needed me for anything or not. She won't come on camera and ask me. So if anyone has anything to say or wants to chat, Ian will be right here for a moment. It's better than putting me on the dead screen. We already started technically late. This morning in Pensacola, loving it every day. Hey, Harry King Wolf. I was doing pretty good. I think I uh, might already wrap that up. Any other lovely questions for you, for you guys? Questions about um, the Death Trooper um, caps, left or right? I know I'm cleaning up my chest plate, so when uh, we're ready to start doing the next tutorial, uh, I will have a clean piece, not a really uncomfortable and you know chunky piece with a bunch of extra plastic added onto it. Hope everybody's having a good day.
steel. Yeah, I actually, when I was petting my uh, back plate, I nipped a little too far into the uh, one of the side pieces, so I went and reinforced it with a little bit of extra plastic, and then covered up the uh, crack with a little bit of super glue, and now I'm just trying to feather it out, so when I go into paint, it doesn't look so bad. Most of your paint, if you're using good, you're using good paint, will cover up any details, and again, it's a death trooper, you know? Um, as I like to say, there are no accidents, there's battle damage. And uh, you get lots of it when you're out in the field fighting uh, rebel scum and bringing peace and victory to the mighty empire. Then again, I'm just going to go in and check for any, uh, you know, little pieces that I may have heated up during uh, standing. Puffing them out, making them clean. Uh, all the good stuff. So any comments, any questions, any recommendations for maybe a next video on one of our uh, suits? We've got a lot of fun jazz in the works. We're gonna have some new projects. Side left is out soon. And the boss is back. Yeah, standing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I hadn't gotten to the sanding on those yet. Well, one of the things I did was I actually mixed them in the plastic so hard, so I reinforced it and then I covered it up with plastic and I sanded it down. I don't know how. I don't know how. Not even there yet. That's not how we're Death Troopers and how, uh, you know. Just oh, your overcut? Yeah, yeah, where you had your overcut? Yeah. yeah. That's just to fill in with super glue. Yep. It's just making it um, super clean and thick. So this yeah, I actually didn't mean to show this earlier, too. And it's actually something I should go ahead and do. Which one was it? Um, switch camera view. Ah, not Spotify. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to this for a second. Um, usually, if you have any orange peel, I have to go real, real close up so you can see it like a little bit of texturing in it just go through and sand it and after you paint your armor um like you really should paint all of your armor no matter what it is what it's made out of it needs to be painted helmets and armor are painted to match that's just how this works that's how this has worked since minimum we started making clones because we first had resin helmets and going from back form you know stormtrooper armor so if you get a little orange peel, sand it off with 120 and stage it up to 720. By the time you paint it, it all disappears and looks like smooth plastic. In all honesty, it doesn't hurt to sand the entirety of your armor before you paint it. That's just proper and good painting techniques. Switch back to the overhead view. Uh, I think this was one of the last sets that I had that Luke had not sanded the armor on yet. So let's sit with a palm sander here for just a minute uh, and get all the burrs off.
Guys. So it's almost time again for another fun, awkward intro video. Yay! I can't wait. Um, and yeah, just so anyone and everyone can see, yes, the helmets are resin. They're not the same color as plastic armor. Since we're using so much Bondo and filler and whatnot, you should be painting your armor no matter what. We all have to paint our armor. We've all had to paint our armor since minimum clones. So it's just something to get used to. Got to get used to it. If it's a surprise, well, that's just how it is, though. So, sorry. <sighs> okay, awkward intro video time about the chest and back for the Death Trooper. Uh, error, YouTube is not seeing the main team smooth streaming as such. Well, what? What? Is somebody using internet or something too much over here? Eh, well, sorry. If our rate goes down, it's because something's going on with down the street. With the internet provider. Alright, awkward intro time.
Hi, Mike and Ian from A50 Armor Works here, bringing you a tutorial specific to the Death Trooper chest and back. You can uh, go ahead and refer back to our tank driver, short trooper chest and back, since these are all essentially the same set of chest and back armor. Uh, we are covering the version, let's say, um, to, ever since we introduced the collar into the kit standard we sneak them in um, i know over a year ago we made them uh, before solo um, and but it took a year after us making them to go ahead and prototype it one day into our existing sets to make sure it could work so you can follow that build tutorial or you can go ahead and look at this pretty much full on i'm going to get a little depth in here because as this as the parts are laid out, this is the absolute current version of our Death Troop Best and Back Set and all parts associated with it. So the first thing that we'll do, actually we're missing some parts associated with it, um, but we'll not, not really too worried about those. Those are just the side buckets that we're missing from this layout. Um, not too worried about that. So first let's start with the inventory of all your parts. We have the chest already trimmed. Oh, look at the wrong camera already trimmed. In fact, let me go ahead and switch our views here. There we go. Much better. And now y'all can like see the parts up close and I have points of reference to look at. Um, so let's start with the chest. Here's the chest. It's already trimmed out. Now if you need help trimming, there aren't specific trim or cut lines but the easiest thing for you to do is look on the inside of the part and then use a pencil or take a um, colored sharpie and mark on the inside and then you can cut from there. Uh, we've demonstrated a lot of cutting tools you can use. I use a bandsaw with a 14 piece per inch, 1 8 inch blade to cut everything out and then we sand it and shape things on the belt sander. It's the fastest method. If you're home or in the garage and you don't have that, you've got a wide array of snips available. These are going to come in very handy across your model building careers. Uh, so we have the chest. We have the back. Okay, we have the side wings. Now I already have these pre-cut because you're using multiple parts of these. So these are the side wings right here. As they come in the kit, when they're cut apart, these are the base side wings. We'll set those to the side for now. And here's some extra pre-molded curved plastic that we're going to be using later on in assembly. Trust me, this is going to come in very, very, very handy. So what do we want to start with first? Well, we have all these trims. Well, we're still not done with our inventory yet. Um, next, we're going to have the buckles. Uh, I'm going to lay these on and demonstrate how to assemble them, but we don't paint on top of these. All these tutorials we're bringing you are to paint ready, and then there are details that are added on top. Uh, the rubber straps are already black in color. We don't want them to be shiny. We don't want to mask them off or deal with them, so we'll install them. They're purely aesthetic whenever they go in. Uh, and these are the newest versions with the wonky printed buckle that's not the ejection seat buckle. And here are the back boxes, which is a new addition. Um, I think if you look on our Facebook page, um, you'll have to uh, dig some posts a while back. We uploaded these for free as a downloadable 3D model file. So you can print them on your own and install them in your back or anyone else's back if you want to. So that's out there. It's free. So the place where we're actually going to start, oh, and the last piece of the puzzle is going to be the collar. Uh, the collar comes pretty close to being trimmed just due to the way it has to be taken off of the mold. It's, it's a pain in the rear to deal with this. Uh, but from there, we have a lot of a little bit of excess trimming to do. There is one solid cut line that you can follow on the outside edge here, and that's what we're going to have to do first. You want to remove any of the plastic that's curled over. Um, on the inside, it gets a little bit more difficult to cut. We do use snips up to a certain point, 
and then we'll have to break out a razor knife and work around the other edges. And that'll break the rest of that off and just some creative sanding and whatnot. So we're going to sit here and have fun for a little bit, trimming the collar for a while. find a razor knife to For my bit of the trim, I'm going to start with the razor knife on the inside and do the score and, stat, score and snap me method from the inside. Just really lightly making the first scores as evenly as I can. Slow, consistent scoring. And I'd rather score accidentally below than above. Keep your eyes on where you're scoring and your hand will generally follow. Ah, there we go. And that's how nice scoring and snapping can be there. I don't recommend trimming out a whole suit of armor like that. I've gotten um, a couple of nice, nice gashes in my legs from it over the years. It's never fun. I'm getting a little too deep for the first cut on this one. And I'm running parallel. making sure that we don't have any curls. If I were running downward, we may have little curls left over from the plastic. This is one of those times where I'm glad the plastic's slightly thinner. See, when I only went through that section, it popped through and I was able to use the sharp blade. Sharp blades are your friend. I switched these over to a sharp blade for ever attempting to cut. And we're just gonna continue this. Oh. And we found it. There we go. We already found our end. Where the scissors got in. There we go. I had already pre-cut the other side a bit with some of the shears, but it did leave a, a bunch of nastiness. You can see the score and snap method was definitely the better method to do. I should be able to get in here and clean this up just fine though. I'm going to put it on its side this time. And just make me a little line to follow while we work all our way, all the way down. This is probably the most tedious part of putting together this chest and back assembly. but it's really not bad.
one little ugly bit right there that I'll be able to whittle off. Yep, that whittled off nice. A little gap clean up in here if I can get to it. Belt sander is still something that is used on this by me quite often. Because it's just easier. To get on the outside. So we're just about done here on the inside. Handy dandy snips, and we're just going to go off at a 90 degree at the bottom of each of these. Now we're going to get a little snip, but I'll get it up a touch higher. All right. We have some of the outside to do here. So I'll get as much as I can with the scissors and move over to the belt sander for the rest if I have to. That's pretty much as far as the scissors like to take me on that side. That's pretty typical. Uh, score and snap would work here. I will be moving over to the belt sander in a bit. Now I'm just following the cut line, molded on the back, that's a very important cut line to follow. That's going to be our guide for when we're installing this on the back. even a little bit of it up on the belt sander but that's pretty much how your hand cut out should look and you want this flexibility this is going to come in very handy so I'm going to exit over to the belt sander for a moment and clean up some of these edges and uh, where, where we left some scissor marks and see you in just a second.
All right, I am back from the belt sander, just evening up the scissor marks. And I love my belt sander. It's so much fun. I really recommend y'all going and spending a hundred bucks on a belt sander, some 120 grit belts, and some um, 80 grit belts. Those are uh, maybe even some 50s. I got a few over there that come in handy for helmets. It is a life saving tool. So after the belt sander, got to do some palm sanding and a little hand sanding, getting the rest of the burrs off before we move on to the back plate. <laughs> think for a second uh yeah that completes what we need to do to trim out the collar so i'm going to move on to the back plate next i'll just set that to the side because these two parts go hand in hand with each other all right so we're on to the back just give you a general idea of how it should look whenever it's trimmed give or take i think there was one more thing about the collar in our mold there is a crack on the right hand side that helps facilitate us uh, demolding the part from the mold because this is a very very complex shape um, so to get rid of this little perceived crack that you see right here we're just gonna sand it I can't iterate this enough this plastic is two millimeter plastic. It can take a beating, it's ABS. So we're going to sand that little defect off. grit on the palm sander and it's gone we'll feather this down further with some finer grit some 220 here's a little 220 by hand i can hand sand it with and blend it with the rest of the cloth collar after painting all of that will be gorgeous never even know it was there and it does not compromise the plastic it's still 26 through and through right there so that'll wrap it up to the collar portion now we can move on to the back plate so here's the back with the basic trim and we have to do a couple things to this so to get the collar mounted, well, it's not even sanded up here, so. Get those burrs off, I don't like burrs. All right, 
<laughs> so tips for the back. And this is where the collar and the spare strips from the side wings are going to come in handy with your chest and back assembly. Because we're going to be using these later. You want to keep the shoulder strap portion that's molded in as wide as possible whenever you're trimming. And then you want to make sure you cut it off at about as 90 degrees as you can possibly get it. So we're going to use our handy dandy super shears here and see if I can level this one off so it's nice and 90 degrees. That's pretty good to me. My other one was pretty good too. And you can see also right now I've got more plastic up here than down here. That really doesn't make me any difference because we're go just with the way that we're going to be putting all this together, we're going to be filling that seam. And even if we fill that seam and then cut in a faux separation um, for like level two or level three type requirements, we will. Uh, but the way we build armor is for wear and trooping. There is a difference between armor that is used for screen and tossed aside or armor that you're going to keep in your armor bin and wear a decade from now. So that's how we build armor and we don't worry about how they built it for the film because our fans don't know the difference. All right, that part is done. Um, major thing to do here before we start attaching the collar is to go ahead and dremel out the slots for the shoulder straps and we will dremel out the um, back box holes so that we can mount the high res detailed back boxes in there and again look on our facebook page we made a post it's free to download you can 3d print them yourself uh, we may have them on our website, but these have been included in the kit since we introduced them a while ago now. I, I don't remember when. So I'm going to get to Dremel tooling with a fiberglass reinforced cutoff wheel. And I'm going to go ultra high blinding speed of 25. That'll do it for me. So other options that you have of cutting these out is you can score and snap. Um, so we've got these to cut out, we got these to cut out. When you're cutting things out, you know, you want to make sure your test fitting and everything looks good along the way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start with the tops because they're the easiest for me to do. And we're going to cut out the entire section here and a little bit into the part here to make it easier to slide the strap in. <laughs> that wasn't too loud for everybody our noise gate may have kicked in a few times because our microphone is just kind of sitting right here all right that's what I mean by te test fitting you want to make sure that that thing's gonna go in easily so yep it's definitely gonna go in we don't have to worry about that anymore uh, we'll clean this up A little bit of folded over 80 grit, 120 grit sandpaper. Now this is something pre-prep to do right now while you're here. Go ahead and sand the inside. 
because you're going to be gluing down the, that shoulder strap on the inside here eventually. So let's just go ahead and knock it out of the way. There we go, it's already sanded. And we will repeat the process with the other side here. Hmm? No, you can wait for the drummer. But I need to finish up all of this before I hand it off. Alright, so that's done, and let's see if we got a fit. Yep, we got a fit, so we're good to go. And let's pre sand that side so you don't forget it later. Doesn't hurt a thing. Alright, so now we're going to move on to cutting these out. Now, when I designed these drop boxes, I designed them with an extended lip so that we would be gluing this lip from the inside of it. Um, I'm going to be making a revision to the uh, Shore Trooper, Tank Trooper back boxes, very similar to this uh, soon, but currently we don't have any real mounting issues with the way they are, but it's just a nice little feature that I added in. So when you're cutting it out, you need to keep in mind the area you're cutting and you do leave a tiny little lip, I mean, millimeter, millimeter and a half at most. Um, just check your depth with the back box and you should be good to go. So I'm going to start getting more hot melting plastic flying in my face. While we make a whole bunch of noise with the microphone. I just move back. I just move back. I just need some light. sander accident earlier Whew. all right just removing the burrs real quick the big thick ones and i'm gonna test fit the resin box make sure it's set up and looking the way i want it uh we'll be block sanding a bit the inside cleaning up these edges making it look real good before you glue anything permanent but test fit test fit test fit that is just a key rule yep and that's how the high detail box is going to look basically once it's installed like I said, we're going to do some block sanding to clean all this up. For now, we'll move on to the other one.
what a beautiful noise you've discovered. And here is the true purpose of the Death Trooper backplate back panels. They're actually like little doors that they open up to go into robot compartments. No, they're not. I'm just full of it. There you go. Yeah, I'm sure it is. That's just fancy whatever. That's, that's where they put their batteries. Right box, quick test fit in place, yep, nice and pretty, still some burrs to clean up and some block sanding to go before we glue these in. Um, air. Take this over that way. Make less noise. Well, I continue on with this. You only need one. They're the same, so yeah, you only need to grab one. Make sure it fits. Don't cut off too much, please. Please. It'd just be like that sometimes. It's been a long day already. Oh, all right. Sorry about that. Had to take a breather for just a second. <laughs> so I'm just going to get the sand and the rest of the burrs off. Oh, I, I really just have never been the biggest fan of the Dremel tool and cutting things out, but it just makes things go faster. It just makes a mess. Be thankful it's not fiberglass. Having to wear dust masks. Thought of miss, I can get the razor blade. So 
right, I'm just going to do the cleanup with the razor blade here and save myself the trouble of actually sanding it because it's really not bad at all. some of these heavy ones making sure we get some nice looking corners I've gotten it with the razor blade. I'm gonna go over it one more time with sandpaper here. So much fun. Building models all day. Really all it is, we're just building life-size model kits. Ian's making some noise over there, too. Well, I just sent him over there. I don't know what it was like for you guys if y'all were listening in when I was running the drum but that had to have been horrible. All right. Now, y'all know we're going to glue these back boxes in, so like we did the pre-sanding there, I'm going to go ahead and do my pre-sanding on the inside here because we know it's, it's coming. It saves me time in the future, so don't blame me if I don't bring it up later. I'm just sanding all around the mounting areas with the sandpaper, like really doubled over. And man, that is really hurting me today, right there. I, 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 I'm really regretful the belt sander decided to bite me today. I haven't been bitten by the belt sander really ever. Yes, dear. You know, if you need to get coffee or none. Coffee sounds nice. Now that we broadcast to our four viewers. Hello, four viewers. We're going to get coffee. You want to come say hi and show off your new haircut? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. It's over there. Lovely Lisa is coming into the picture, so let me switch the view here real quick to say hi. No, you're going to say hi. <laughs> hi. hi this is how short she is. She's five feet tall, so me sitting in... <laughs> This chair is. Which camera am I looking at? You're looking at this camera. Okay. That camera. So don't get in the habit of looking at yourself on the screen. Yeah. You look into the camera whenever you can. How you it's doing, tough... everybody? Yeah. Howdy ho. <laughs> so, Lisa, what's going on in your world right now? What's going on in my world? What's going on in your world? Hmm. Everybody say hi to Lisa. Well, what we can tell you is the big V word that we're not supposed to say on YouTube and social media because your posts and whatnot can be flagged. Um, yeah, it's it's really hampered shipping and timing and just getting things done in general because we've had to go back to homeschooling and, and dealing with children that way and back and forth and people that are making more on unemployment sitting at home, you know, we've offered jobs to people, and so, you know, here we are just doing it ourselves as usual, I say that's her, so please be patient with her and emails and whatnot, right. you know, she's, okay. pro 
You'll know it's me replying back if I'm a little testy. <laughs> or really short-worded, or really long-winded about something, you never know. But I have a style, but I don't reply to messages very often. Um, I'm usually here doing this. You know, her time has been limited trying to get the shipping and the emails and the tracking and the updates and um, uh, measurement charts and... You know, we we got a lot of irons in the fire, and I've, I've said before, we got a lot of things that are coming up that are amazing, just absolutely amazing that we can't wait to show results from and whatnot. It, it's things are happening. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's just, it's just a dream come true right now. Some of the things we we said we wanted 2020 to be a big year, and I mean it was it, we were on track. For a big year and then it was just like the setbacks and we look up and here we are two months later and like we should have been done with half of this by now and it's just disrupted us i mean trying to record and upload videos for logan to edit for these tutorials and you know he's he's he transitioned from going to college classes to online classes that he has to be there for and he doesn't have his office here anymore, so we telecommuted, and the communication just doesn't work that way since we're a family business. So, you know, we're, we're starting to get things back together and organized again, finally. Yeah, right now they're... Finally. Setting up some desks office, in our office yeah, space. over there, and they're building my new desk right now, and so pieces are scattered everywhere. Yeah. I was going to pour more resin parts, but I'd be in the way. They got all the desk pieces laid out and yeah. so I got a break right now so I thought I'm gonna go get some coffee and yeah that sound, coffee sounds good I really we really need to progress along on this chest and back tutorial because these really don't take me very long to put together just whenever I'm slowly explaining every single step that I have to do because I can do these on autopilot I got three more right behind me I have to put together and um, I was hoping to do them today which we may still have time to on camera. I got to be out of here right around three today. So I'm going to get on with this. Um, I guess if you're going to order coffee, I should have something saved in there. Okay. So, um, yeah, the, whatever Americano I have saved in there is what I want. Okay. Hot. Americano. Real Italian mixed with real American hot water. <laughs> American. All right, love you. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. She's very stubborn about coming on camera and being seen, so. Yeah, there's the note in it. Yeah, it's fine. Does it all fit? Yep. All right. Just stand it down with your hands. Okay. Where are you at in the video? Oh, um, no, I'm just cleaned up. Okay. Kind of waiting on you. Lisa came by to. That's our microphone. I don't really think I need it anymore. You can... Just, just put put it underneath the workbench for me. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to plug it. No, yeah, keep it plugged in. But no, 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 no. From straight over. Okay. Yeah. Don't don't wrap it around the bend. There you go. Just just no. Yeah. Just drop. See, okay. is, is, you see this hole? Yeah. See, see, see that hole? See that, that little hole? Yeah. There you go. There nice you little go. hole. Right. Nice little hole to keep the Dremel protected, so I don't kick. It. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you're OCD. <laughs> Or when you have OCD tendencies that start kicking in. I'm, I'm unplugging this. This thing doesn't need to be plugged in right now. 
let's keep it a little bit more stable. It should directionally be able to hear us from there. Yeah, you're cleaning that up. So, um, yeah, I switched my camera angle. We'll get back to the actual tutorial portion of this. And see why running a live tutorial or while I'm recording actually takes so long. It's just all the explaining I have to do the entire time. I don't mind explaining, it's just I run on autopilot whenever I'm building armor. Uh, and I wasn't done sanding, Lisa distracted me. So, where we were, where we last left off, we were sanding the, or pre-sanding the insides of the cutouts where we're going to put the, uh, where we're going to glue down the back boxes to. It's all about getting that shine off and creating a tooth. So, while well, y'all see me like sitting here working on my armor, give me a sec to like make a commentary. Like when y'all pull a kit out of the box, when you first get it, whenever we've heard complaints of, oh, the plastic has scratches on it, do, do you guys see me sitting here like, you know, putting more and more and more scratches in the armor by rubbing it when we're just assembling it? Like I said, guys, we're painting, so... You know, a little bit of damage here or there doesn't matter. Plus, these suits can be lightly weathered. You want a weathered look. You you want clean and... Sh I mean, you start with the clean and shiny, but you got to degrade it a little bit. Um, the, the clean and shinies are beautiful. All the suits I've worn have been clean and shiny. I can't wait to have my permanent death trooper uh, because he's going to be awesome. Um, so, yeah, don't wor worry too much. You, you, you got to be able to see the forest through the trees. You got to see the end product from all these crazy parts. So, we've done all this sanding. Let's just continue on with the builds. So, next step is we're going to be getting the collar lined up on the back armor. The whole assembly of this chest and back hinges on this collar. Everything works around it. We permanently attach it to the rear here. So the first thing that we're going to do is do the test fit. And I'm just holding it in the middle. You want to make sure it looks roughly uniform. Turn it around. Make sure your, your fronts look pretty good because you still got some room. You can do some trimming and snipping, whatever. And then if you're satisfied with that, bring out the pencil and draw the pencil mark. Now, I'm unsure what the CRL says specifically right now about the collar. I thought I read something about the level two um, wanting you to fill the collar. I'm not 100% certain on that because I can pull up stills from the movie where you see a separate collar. Um, we leave that optional. The only thing that I know of for sure right now is the uh, tank drivers have to have a seamless collar which is kind of silly considering that these are all the same sets of armor I just don't understand that it's like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing but it also ends up violating your own rules there of your instructions at the top of your 500 first CRL saying um, this is not a how-to guide on how to put together your armor, but you're telling me how to put together my armor by doing that. So I, that stuff just drives me nuts a bit. Sorry. I, I really just don't see the overall point of having so many different things and being so specific on certain details and so lax on others. Just build your armor and wear your armor. You know, do what works for you. Don't worry about what other people think or what other people do. So, sand at this side of the collar here because we are going to be gluing. we got the pencil mark to follow up to right there. That's going to be the end of where the glue goes. And we're going to go ahead and sand the whole inside of the collar right here. We're not going to have easy access to it going forward. And we may or may not be gluing it because we can kind of leave the collar free floating. And we don't really have to permanently attach anything if anyone's worried about CRL guidance type issues. 
We got a lot of uh, emails and messages early on with people freaking out that the CRLs are changing and they don't know if their armor is going to work or not. We're like, guys, I mean, with the way the armor's been going out for minimum the past year and a half, it's fine. It, nothing really changed. It, and it was even said in the, para, in the opening paragraph that most of it was cosmetic. Um, I actually did send in an email to... Um, uh, to Scuba Cat, Cat, the detachment leader, at least from last year. I don't know if she's still the DL. I can't remember. Um, because we were watching Rogue One in here one day, and the scene, there's a scene on the beach where the Death Troopers are on the hill, and there's two of them. And what I saw from that overhead shot was their collars were actually physically cut off right here and there was a jagged line and those guys were specifically wearing shoulder pauldrons i can tell you right now if you use this collar system and you plan on wearing a shoulder pauldron it's it's your helmet's going to sit right on top of it and it's not going to fold over and look right so keep that in mind the way we used to do these chest and back collar systems is these just overlap with one another. Notice on the chest, and I'll get to it later, I already cut all this out. That's how we used to put these together, um, and they just did an overlap system with the collar molded in. Now they act as tabs for supporting the collar and keeping it from flopping around whenever you put this assembly together. <clears throat> so back to the collar, everything's sanded, all the inside here, I'll go ahead and just sand the whole outside here so we won't have access to it anymore either. Just in case we want to glue anything else down or we want to leave it too floating. And now, super glue with our 2P10. We're just going to do the back portion of it. I do not want to do anything on the front at this time because I want to retain the thinness of the plastic where it's stretched out so we have some flexibility to work with. Make sure all your lines line up. squeezing and holding this in place. Since I sanded it real well, we have a nice tooth that developed. I am not worried at all about it not curing right now. And I can sneak some accelerator from the inside. So this is a good use of the 2P10 accelerator because it goes high volume. And that's a whole hidden area we won't be needing. So there we go. All right. So that's your basic collar just attached. And, and I mean, it hinges, your whole chest and back assembly hinges on getting this collar affixed right. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and move on to the back boxes right now before we start putting anything else together uh, while we still have nice open access to everything right here. Um, your prep for the back boxes, I've, I've already done this. Uh, simple green and water and uh, brush, rag, whatever, doesn't matter. Squirt it down, wipe it off, rinse them off, let them dry really well. That gets rid of any of the residual mold release. Um, and we know we're going to be gluing this top. We've already sanded the inside. So let's do the same thing here and sand the top to create the tooth and the urethane resin. There's really not much else to do to these unless you want to get really anal with it. Uh, most of the print lines were completely gone. Um, I did a real bang up job getting these masters finished and molded and clean. It was a spontaneous addition that I decided to add to the suit because I was just sick of looking at what we had. And that's how a lot of changes and updates. Wow, sorry about that. That's how a lot of the changes and updates end up happening around here. It's just, I get tired of doing something or looking at something or I just want to do it better. Just throw it in. All right, those are sanded. Remember the circly one goes on the left. 
So let's test fit in the line one more time, make sure we are happy with what we see here. You're going to want to line it up at the bottom and make sure it is parallel. I'm going to take a take the super glue and run the bead of super glue all around it, all around the top. Yes, what is your question? These right here, these need to be visible? Yes. Okay, so then I need to go. You need to cut more? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good example. He didn't cut quite enough out of the back boxes. The two little oh tab thingies at the top, whatever they are. Yeah, they should be visible. Didn't spend all that time modeling that detail in these back boxes for them to be hidden. A nice detail, I don't want to mess up. I know. Alrighty, and remember the tab thingies are at the top. This one's going on the left. I am going to pre-spray the accelerator here. This isn't a hard thing for me to line up. These are real easy to do. The only thing I'm worried about is super glue getting on my fingers. I am gonna stand up for it. So I get you a good camera angle coming in from the inside. I'm gonna super glue all over my fingers, so it's making it a little bit harder for me to maneuver here. And coming in from the bottom. All right, that's in. And then try to put as much pressure as you can, push in from the bottom and the top from the plastic so it can secure together right here. Boom, that baby's in. We're gonna repeat the process with the other one. I think I already sanded it. I feel like I already sanded it, but I'm gonna sand it real quick just to run across this. I thought I sanded it. Maybe I didn't. Alright. Do our test fit. Okay, we are good here. Same thing. Super glue on the top. One nice bead of it. And again, we'll pre-spray the inside. I'm pretty confident at the alignment and being able to align it. So that'll make sure we get a quick and instant set. Watch me get more glue all over my fingers while I try to set this for you for the camera. And I'm trying to not only align it up at the bottom, but make sure it stays in line with the other box with all the detail visible. I didn't like that alignment. I was able to yank it off before I pushed it in. This one's much better. And push all directions. Alrighty, guys. And that is that much of the installation of the back boxes. Pretty easy stuff, super high detail. So if we're talking about this. We already talked about the crack right here. I want to talk about this line that you see right here at the top. This is what is called a cold pull line. What happens when you're vacuum forming? Go watch some YouTube videos about vacuum forming. Okay. Our mold is below the plastic. 
Whether it's a heated mold or not, we have experimented with this. I've been vacuum forming since 1998, so I, I know just a thing or two about it. Um, the mold is down here, the plastic's being heated, our plastic comes over, and then the platen comes up, stretches the plastic, the vacuum makes it seal, and sucks all the plastic down. Now while that plastic's made a stretch, it has instantly cooled right here at the sharp corner of the mold and pulled that already cooled plastic down to right here. This is common. I can show you this in everybody's armor. Hard angles are our enemies. You can see slight hints of them happening here and here. These are not defects in the mold. It is smooth as a baby's bottom right there. So if that bothers you, sand it just like we did the collar. it's gone just like that there's nothing you can't fix except if you shred it it's like a lost cause there um, there's one more little detail to the back so there's one more little detail to the back and it's this little uh, block that goes above the dot in the center. This doesn't back form with a lot of detail, so we always add these in separate. Uh, this is just some styrene tube. You can also get it solid, or you can use some wood dowel rod. We consider these hobby supplies, model building type supplies, so we don't include these for kits. If we get our, if, if Logan can find the time to get our CNC laser running again, we will start running these in acrylic and including them with the kit along with a few other things, but those are just holdups we're still waiting on. Yours right there. Um, I have a little miniature chop saw, but I'm just going to sand the edges here to make that clean. We're gluing one side of it. So I'm only going to sand the bottom on one side and try to make sure that stays my bottom. line it up the best that I can here try to keep it as center as possible by eyeballing there's no real measurement this is about an inch and a half wide uh, say quarter inch cube piece so get yourself a quarter inch square dowel rod or some styrene and I'm pencil marking this now so I know where to sand and that's where I'm going to glue to too And this is actually an area where I'm very sparing with the super glue because it will slip and slide all over the place on me if you're not careful. So I'm actually going to put it on the, the part here and then be ready with the accelerator not long after. Right handed and wounded. Not working out right now. There we go. All right, I have my lines to follow. I know where I'm putting it pretty much. And then once you find that line in that spot, hold it down, gentle, gentle pressure. Put my accelerator go. Get your accelerator out. A little bit more pressure and give it a squirty, squirt, squirt. And she's on permanent. So, let me reiterate, 
that does not come with the kit. Not for shore troopers, death troopers, or tankers. It's just random hobby stuff we have laying around. Um, whenever you do get your kits, a, a piece that works well to supplant this is one of your cutoffs from the rubber strips because you're not going to use the full lengths of these all the time. And for the death troopers, we send a nice long length. So I tr trust me, you're going to have about three of them, three to six that you'd be able to use if you don't have anything else. You just got to look around. Where there's a will, there's a way. We're hobbyists. We're do-it-yourselfers. And I just don't believe in including absolutely everything you, we think that you think that you need to put a kit together. Because I don't like snaps. But what if you do like snaps? You know, we have all Velcro and buckle harnesses, but you're a snap guy. So you don't want us to send all the harnesses. And that's why we leave all that stuff up to you guys. That's all personal preference. Every bit of it. All right, that is the major portion of getting the back detailed and ready. Now, here's where the cutoffs from the side wings are going to come into play. We are going to use these as tabs underneath. We're going to glue them on the underside here so that we can have some support to glue the chest on. So first thing I'm going to do is figure out which ones I want to use where because that kind of changes every time and every build. No build is ever a hundred percent identical. Find the best ones to use. First thing, let me actually line, let me line up the chest. I need to cut something off the chest, but it's not time yet. Let me show you all that when we're doing this. Oh, stop it. Okay. Get in there. Get in there. There we go. There we go. Alright. You want your little fangs to kind of rest right there. So I'm just trying to get an idea of where I need to put. Alright. They need to go to the insides, not the outsides. Okay. So we'll be good to go. So we want to cover the inside here coming down. We're not going to use the whole thing. Back. We're building these tabs right here. Let me cut this 90 degrees. We only need about this much. And this is just some really good handy plastic to keep around in your scrap bin. We got tons of it. Same as always. Sand anything that's going to get glued together. not gluing this yet. I want to make a little pencil mark so I have a guide to follow. There we go. I have my little line here. And I'll sand up to that line. Get a nice healthy dose of super glue going in here. This is all your support right here. This is the reason why you're able to take our armor and throw it across the room and it won't fall apart. If you build it like this. Put a little pre bend in it so that the, it's not fighting the chest trying to get in there. And we'll repeat this process on this other side. This much. So, Pencil mark. Sand up to the line. 
sand the inside here. Pre-apply accelerator. Line up, squeeze, apply pressure. Hold for 10, 15, 20 seconds. Pre-bring the strap a little bit. It's not fighting the chest when it comes in for alignment. All right, and that was pretty much all the hard stuff right here going into that. Um, we're going to go ahead and address the wings again while this thing is open. You know, all everything gets assembled to the back, and the chest is pretty much just nothing. So moving on to the side wing, these are going to be oversized, so you're definitely going to be trimming some extra plastic. You get to determine if you want to trim it from the top or the bottom. Make sure you're satisfied with all your cuts on the wings and whatnot. Uh, to me, this one needs a little bit more trimming going across here. There's not a set cut line right here, but there is a definite smooth area and kind of rounded over area. It, it's there. Okay. So you got left and rights on the wings, and it really doesn't matter because you can inverse them and they would work just about the same. That one can work that way, this one can work this way. What matters is you kind of have the arching detail. I've actually just found it easier to just assemble upside down most of the time. But let's go ahead and do it the proper way here. Um, I am going to opt to cut off the bottom because it's easier for me. So here I am with the alignment on the right hand side, making our pencil mark. And we're going to do the pencil mark on both sides. I want it back here too because I want to know where I'm going to be sanding to. So there's both pencil marks. I'm not pre cutting anything yet. The shears sand up to the lines. the time you want to keep clamp sandy too in case you want to clamp it down we'll apply super glue to the area that we pencil marked off pre-apply accelerator find those pencil marks And squish. If you don't want to hold it, that's why you bring the clamps in. Just go ahead and let them let the clamps do their job. Go through here and repeat the process on the on the left side. You want to line it up at the top. Make sure we have enough room um, for contacts and gluing. Your pencil marks inside and outside. Huh? 
And you know, there's like 15 kits right there. <laughs> All done too, if you need a quick look at something. Yeah, those are all the ones I've already built. So we, we've got the pencil marks in and sand for the gluing. Noticing a theme here. All right, we apply glue. apply accelerator and find your pencil marks where you're lining it up in place. You can hold it or you can clamp it. We'll let that set for just a minute. No, that's that's they'll work the same. Yeah, they'll work the same. Just make them look like that. Okay. I'm not. We're not warming up the machine. I don't know what happened to yours. No, you're good. And they go on the inside, not outside. side wing extensions that attach to your chest. Okay. They hold your chest in place because we're going to put a little Velcro on it. It's not that big a deal. Oh, sorry about that. I had to take a break for a second. All right, let's get back into finishing this up. These are nice and dry now. Cured up real good. And I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess here. You can draw a line if you want. I'm just going to freehand it because these are mostly going to be hidden anyway. Because they just wrap around and connect the chest like I was telling Ian over there. Everything you really need to do to the back before we move on to the chest. Absolutely every part from the kit. Create the back. Okay, so moving on to the chest. This is the preliminary trim. It's going to be rounded over right here, but go ahead and cut that out. And since that's going to be tucking up under the collar, we actually need to trim a little bit additional off just so it sits up under the collar in case we ever want to glue it in in the future. But it'll just ride better if you take this little bit off. And again, we're not going to have access to this area, so let's go ahead and sand it. 
case we do ever want to glue the collar down to it. You never know. Just a second, we'll start lining these up. There's one more part I need to grab. All right. Plenty of y'all are probably wondering what in tarnation is this? This is the Gorget. Okay, we've cut it. There, there was one molded into the chest, and that's cut off, and now it acts underneath and is a separate part. Once we assemble all this, it's going to slip on over your head, and if this were in place, there wouldn't be enough room for your head to go in. So this will be attached later uh, with magnets or Velcro. You'll actually go ahead and cut out a little hole right here where the indent is so that it sits flush flush up underneath those. Um, it, it's just a requirement thing, and um, it, it's not something that we put out in our build tutorial here just because um, we're bringing these to paint ready, and this isn't a, a permanently installed part. It gets painted completely separate. But that's the deal with the Gorget. That's the way it works. And my personal recommendation, put it in for your approval, take it out whenever you're trooping. Who cares? That thing will choke you to death. We don't get paid enough for that. All right. And now we're going to start test fitting the chest onto the back. It's going to push up where you want your flexibility and why you want flexible plastic. Let's see where we are. We're holding it down to the tabs. It lines up pretty good as it, as it sits. So you're going to be looking at it upside down here for a second. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with points that are there. So I'm going to hold this one side really well here and try to get a pencil mark in so I can go ahead and get sanding done and glue one side down to these tabs. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and scan both the tabs while we have a chance. side on both of these here. Actually, I don't like this side. No wonder I didn't like it. It's got a little bit of an overhang where it wasn't trimmed completely, so I'm going to cut that off to as 90 degrees here as I can. There we go. feel the same way about this side though. Even though I already made that pencil mark, I've got a tiny bit I can take right off to make it just a little bit better. A little bit more 90 degree. There we go. That's better. There we go. Perfect. Alright, I'm going to do a test fit. It's all about test fit, test fit, test fit. Alright, I'm not worried about lining this up under the collar. Everything's flexible right now. That's why we didn't permanently glue. I'm worried about getting up here to this line and us butt joining these two together. 
So I'm happy with what I'm seeing there. Here comes the fun part. Glue and accelerator. Okay, get the accelerator on the other side and have a couple clamps handy. Let's get this puppy lined up and squished. Hold, clamps to hold. You can see the collar is still even flexible and movable from there. All right, we're going to kind of repeat this process on the other side once this has had a chance to cure up. Side's cured. Let's check this side. Make sure we're getting a very close to even alignment. Right now, these two are just butted up right next to each other, and that looks like a good even alignment to me. It's always best if they're butted up next to each other, if you ask me. but I've got some overlap right here. That's where I'm gonna draw my pencil mark for alignment. It'll be a little different on this one. I'm gonna pre-spray and then do glue just because of the angles I'm having to work with. And it lined up so well up here that I'm not overly concerned about it. Just need to keep the collar out of the way while the line attach by using my fingers kind of push it off and then I'm coming into my pencil mark following that line getting it butted up in my hand and we'll just hold that together while it cures Can I borrow one of the things? Hmm? Over there. Nothing comes off my workbench. I even bought all those nice duplicate tools that I have on my workbench for y'all to use over there. So that people would quit taking things off this workbench. That is the most frustrating thing ever for me. Okay guys, that is clamped and ready. Now we have a little bit of excess on both sides. We're just going to clean it up with the snips. On this side. That little bit's gone. Um, I might fill this. I want to look at a couple things. And I'm just following this excess here. It's going to curve right along. Be one coherent part. Now this is what I wanted to check in the kit. What I check on each build that I do is if I need to um, do any filling. So we can refer you over to here at this point to our Evercoat tutorial video. That's what I use for the filling. Um, there's, we can easily fill this gap over here if we need to, if the shoulder straps don't look right. So I'm gonna lay the shoulder straps down for placement just to make sure it looks good before I call this done. Okay, one goes in there. Um, no, it does not have to be filled. It is good to go. It, I mean, in my opinion, my personal opinion, it could be a touch wider. So if you do do this, don't be afraid. You can use a little filler, build all that back up, and then you'll have your straps tamped down.
Um, remember earlier in this video, we had pre-sanded here for the Death Trooper. Before this goes to paint, I do not like to paint the shoulder straps. I like the shiny armor and then the dull strap. These are really dusty, so they look really dull. Uh, but that's what we want to see when we are putting these together. So this is pretty much the basics of paint ready. Uh, if you want to here, you can go ahead and glue the collar permanent to the chest if you want. That's one little option, or you can let it kind of free float. Uh, depending on what restrictions are, it doesn't really matter. I prefer to glue it down personally. I think it's better that way. Um, since I'm doing this build in house, I'll be filling this in anyway. Uh, just a bit of a perfectionist whenever I'm doing things. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to fix this on the mold to make it a little bit more natural and easy instead of having to do legwork to make it better. So explaining what we're doing with the wings here. The wings actually go on the inside, and after you get your abdomen and whatnot on, you're going to put this over you, and some Velcro magnets, snaps, whatever you want on the inside here, and that's going to make your, your closure to hold your chest and your back together. So when we're putting this on, it goes over like that, these tuck under, velcro in, and then you get your little gorget piece and it goes inside and you're good to go. Easy peasy. And this is why I have a problem throwing armor all over the place, because I'm not worried about things breaking off. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and set this one to the side. Well, actually, you know what? That's really it. Let me do Logan a little outro video here. Um, sorry for the live viewers that have to tolerate my ad-libbing doing outro videos for videos to be edited later, but, you know, I got to keep my son working too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today about putting together the Death Trooper chest and back. This is uh, the final version of the paint assembly, or the paint ready assembly version of it. So you're pretty much good to go on to paint from this stage if you want to and uh then install your shoulder straps at the very end and you're good to go so thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time ah oh, i hate doing things like that i feel so fake i can't help it i just feel fake Ugh. This doesn't need to be glued down. What? Uh, the collar. Have you glued this to the tab? Yep. Okay. Like I, I can't even really cut it properly, and then do you need to round these out a little bit so they're not sharp? Yeah. That's what I'll say. Okay. Yay! You did something without screwing it up. Everybody, give Ian a round of applause.
Sandy for sand. sand. Everything gets sanded. Everything. It's ninety percent of what we do around here. Sanding. Sanding, sanding, sanding. Everything gets sanded. Yeah, actually, I. Uh, where's my coffee? My coffee, woman. still live? Yeah. We're still oh. on. Okay. We got three viewers. Hi, three viewers. Everybody's been quiet today. We have a lot of lurkers or people watching somewhere else. I posted it on my... Uh, I saw it. I was just looking at your post. Oh. 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 Oh, my back hurts. Stop recording right We got two new subscribers, including you. Were they not subscribed? Two mm -hmm. hours ago. I'll probably subscribe to you on my uh, other one of my other accounts. Because um, I only had I had like two accounts that had Prime, and then they hit me for like sixty bucks, and I was like, oh no, I'm only gonna have one account now. This is ridiculous and expensive. Still running live, but not recording anymore. I don't need to do any more tutorials at this point. That looks nice. That looks nice. Like, yeah, I want to look at those tabs again. Hmm? I want to look at the tabs again before it's over. Would trimming this down be bad? Huh? Would trimming these down be bad? Or? Um, just check them on the shoulder strap. If, it, if they're sticking out on the sides, yeah, they all go kind of flush with each other. Mm -hmm. Or you can take some of that scrap plastic if you want to and build up behind it instead. Mm -hmm. Do that. That's okay. not, that, that's something good for you to do right now. When you want to, yeah, build yeah. it up. Build it up. Just take the a bigger. Here. There you go. That'll do it. Put a couple of those across there. Take the filler and do that. And build. Mm -hmm. That's good practice for you. You want to fill that seam too. Uh, the Evercoat lightweight. Just glue it all in place first. Okay.
while I'm getting this set up, I'm actually going to switch us over to our hold message for just a minute. Need to take a potty break and whatnot, so we're going to keep the microphone muted, but we don't mind running live right now. Not at all. So we'll see y'all back in a jiffy.
Hey guys, if anyone was listening in, we are still around, just leaving our cameras off for a bit while we sort some things out and take care of some of our day-to-day -day business. We will be back shortly and probably be logging off by about 3 o'clock today. So send out some um, messages and shares and whatnot, and uh, we'll continue with it, maybe do a Q&A. See you in a bit.
please give our one viewer, our one viewer, who is left? I am sorry, our one viewer. We had a coffee break. Um, you know, uh, Ian was doing the finishing touches on his chest and back. Pardon me. I miss one viewer. Huh? Oh, you're the one viewer, so I'm talking to nobody. Well, hi, Ian. Yeah. Hi, Ian. <laughs> it's my fault. I'm glad I ended recording a while ago. Um. Anyway, I don't. We don't have any viewers now. Sorry, guys. We sit back. Um. Yeah. Well, I. I oh, now we're back to two viewers. So somebody's back. Yay! Yeah, hi. Might, somebody's I, back. I, then I might have not been the only viewer. Yeah, there may have been other viewers. We don't know. Sorry it took so long to get back. We had coffee break and Ian finishing up armor and having discussions and realizing how old and tired feeling I am right now. Uh, I really want to press on, but I'm probably not going to be pressing on on camera much longer with building if I keep building because i got to be out of here around 3 o'clock, which is only an hour and a half away. Um, so if anyone has Q&As... I'll actually just see. If, hey, Q and A. Q and A time. Anyone want to ask questions? So when you're when this because I don't see how this is back. Yeah. Is this Velcro on? No, clips. clips. You did get the one-inch buckles, right? Yep, I got All right. Uh, yeah, we'll. S now I'm pretty sure. Um, they were in the Pete tutorials mm -hmm. about where to super glue down your nylon. Mm -hmm. Well, you you get over here in camera a little bit more since you're testing on Death Trooper stuff. Um, all right, we super glue nylon buckles mm. from here. You're going to want the pulley side there and the loop side here. Okay. So you want adjustment at the top so you can adjust your abdomen up and down. Mm. And you do the same thing with the back mm. and that trauma plate back there. Mm. And here, super glue in one inch nylon. Mm. To wrap around to hidden buckles in the trauma plate in the back. Okay. Okay. And the trauma plate's the piece that has the yeah, the little theme in it. Yeah. And pull out your trauma plate. And let me see it because I may be able to do a tutorial here real quick. Actually, that would be very, very smart to do with our time. Um, if David Bayer happens to be watching, this is your chest and back set right here. Um, we've spoken on the phone several times, and you are getting ever so much closer to being paint ready, but we still got to get that paint booth ready before we start painting anything right now, except for short troopers, because they kind of suck. Um, or short troopers. And what I mean by suck, I don't mean by suck. I mean, honestly, I can do a crappy job on a... Short trooper, and it'll be a good paint job. Okay. <clears throat> Do I need the nylon straps? No, take that shit off because you're annoying me. Um, sorry, language. <laughs> um, yeah, and you're standing too close to me too. I'm too used to social distancing right now, so yeah, let's not. I do. I have been practicing social distancing my entire life. That's why I enjoy being a hermit. Until you put a few drinks in me or whatever I need, and then, you know, I could be a social butterfly, but I'm in my space, my home, mm. let me live in my bubble. Okay. Yeah, I don't want any of that right now, okay. um, but yes, you do have them. Okay. Um, the tutorial I, I kind of need to do, or at least just toss something out here real quick, mm. uh, that means I need to actually start recording, so I'm not set up for it. Um, yeah, I need to record. This doing me no good. That's yours, right? Yep. All right. Go right over there. I don't want it. Okay. Um. Okay. Look at your nylon loop. Mm -hmm. If you put that on, and you put this on, mm -hmm. you know it's gonna. You're gonna have like this many or so show. You're taller, so you can have most of them show. Doesn't really matter. So put your buckle 
like right around here. You're going to want your female buckle there, paint permanently glue. No, you can go ahead and do it. We'll just mask off mm -hmm. all of that. I do it either way. It doesn't really matter. Okay. But if you want to go ahead and get that in, since you got it and you got glue, do it that way. Okay. Uh, so make sure the are those adjustable both sides or one side? Okay, it's adjustable both sides, so it doesn't. Matter. Yeah. But you're gonna put one down here, and it doesn't matter. Okay. They're, both they're both adjustable, yeah. so they don't matter. Make one permanent, one adjustable. Okay, so double loop over. And be sure to sand that little area that you're putting it in and super glue, put one down, squirt the glue, hold it, super glue the other one down, squirt, super glue, squirt, you know, so, uh, all like that. That's what you're going to be doing like that. One and then okay. okay, and then the coupler is going to come up. Okay, all right. So this and the same right. thing back here, too. You know, you're going to want to put it right here, give or take, one here. Okay. Yeah, the knees. Yeah, the where's the box? There uh, is. Yeah, over there. Here. Yeah. That does that. Yeah. All right. So there's the buckle. Um, I've, I'm, I'm going to do a little explanation thingy on that one here. Uh, and this is the building. Oh, now don't get the key for it. Okie dokely. Still two viewers. I guess we just aren't getting it done today, huh? Scotch, 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 scotch. Oh, I mean, coffee. Yes, just coffee. Let me check our stats real quick and. Okie dokie. Find one more part. Alright, talking about trauma plates and thermal detonators. Alright, that's record. No, the Empire gonna take away my thermal detonators. Yeehaw! I'm <laughs> gonna take out the small threads. Alright, so now we are going to be recording a little video about um, the trauma plate for the Death Trooper. So, here comes the very awkward introduction to our live viewers here um at logan will edit these videos down for us to post later um gonna be doing a little tutorial here on the death trooper trauma plate got a little coffee on that one don't worry it'll buff out um and things that you can do with it about new versions about old versions so here comes our wonderful awkward intro video Hi, I'm Mike from 850 Armor Works, and we're here with Ian today building Death Troopers and trying to get you some tutorials out. Uh, I've got a tutorial for you today about the trauma plate. 
Um, it could also be called the kidney plate, uh, the weird triangle thing, the thermal detonator holder. Um, we're going to try to call it the trauma plate and hope that that's the universal term that we can use for it for even other styles of armor. Um, so I'm going to bring to you a bunch of info about how our trauma plate was uh, for the longest time from when we first started it around 2016 to how current production is and has been for several months. I don't remember how many of the newer ones were out. I know all the last waves pretty much got new ones from our last black run of plastic. So we're going to be talking about that for a bit. So first I'm going to go over the trauma plates and what we're going to do with them. Okay, so these are the trauma plates. This is going to be the most familiar trauma plate, and I'm going to turn around right here even though I'm wearing black. This is where the trauma plate goes. It hangs off the back plate with some quick release and adjustable buckles, and connects around to the abdomen with more hidden buckles behind it. Now, this is going to be the one that most of our uh, clients will be familiar with. Uh, some people had complaints or GMLs were a little bit picky about it, saying that this needed to be mounted up higher. It was put down here for production reasons, for demolding reasons, for wear and tear on the mold. It's just easier overall. Um, a lot of you guys out there have a fix that I found absolutely awesome. We built a lot of these suits. We never did this fix on them. They passed approval, never had any issues, so guys, it's, it's something on your back. It's not really that big of a deal, but we're going to go over how to convert an old trauma plate into a quote-unquote accurate or 500 first CRL approved um, trauma plate that no GML will have a problem with. Um, this is the new trauma plate and how it should actually look with the thermal detonator holder being dead center like that instead. Uh, apparently it was a big deal to have a lift down here. So you, you have a really, really easy way to fix this. I'm going to run over to the bandsaw and I am going to cut across here and we are going to butt join together this and this and then have a quote unquote CRL approved um, trauma plate without any additional cost or having to order a new part. So bear with me for a second while I go zip this off real quick. Well, y'all can key up the do, 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 music because I am back from the bandsaw here with this zipped off 
and prep to be turned around and reattached right here. We're going to butt join and then do a seam fill and um, round up some corners so that we can make one of our old ones look like one of our new ones. This was your trauma plate, right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I just want to make sure I'm doing yours. Uh, some of the supplies that we need. Um, I need um, some flat ABS. Flat ABS. Yeah, let me look around for a sec, though. Here's a piece. I know I have some ABS. Yeah, that's all I need right here. That's a good piece. Just a little scrap piece of ABS had laying around. Um, before anything else, need a sand. Let me do some trimming. Oh my goodness, it's getting stuffy in here, too. Let me turn the fan over. It is Florida, and we have been having some schizophrenic weather. Um, well, while I'm here, before I go any further, too, um, right now Ian is cleaning off some of the supports for the thermal detonator. Um, most of the time we send these off of the printer with the support still on it. If you haven't dealt with 3D printed parts before and you, like, picked it up and, like, things were crumbling off of it, um, it's okay. Those are there to so we can print a 90 degree because it's all printed as one piece going vertical it's you just got to do a little bit of cleanup on them um we have a new printer arriving on the 20th and it should be set up not long after we are actually expecting some even better results out of this printer um more details on that whenever it actually arrives and we get some prints off of it because this is really huge for us right now and i mean huge like let's get donald trump huge you know it's going to be huge uh all right getting back to the thermal detonator tutorial while ian cleans up the thermal detonator itself um whenever i cut on the bandsaw it leaves a little burr so i go ahead and sand it off real quick <laughs> about that if that was too loud for you uh, our noise gate is hopefully working well enough all right that little bit's cleaned up so let's see how well they line up now looking pretty good really so what I'm gonna go ahead and do let me look at the undersides here I'm gonna cut some ABS, Let's see how much I need, just eyeball estimating here, that looks pretty good, you know what, let's try a couple of thicker ones, maybe, and I like to test fit, I know this is not going to fit perfectly like this right now, um, but that's what test fitting is all about. I'll end up nipping some stuff off. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I'm going to follow these angles and then nip it at a 90 degree because it's going to be coming in pretty soon. So that sounds like a, a nice little plan to me. Let's break out our favorite thing, the sandpaper. And get this glued on up, or sanded. I'm going to reiterate this over and over and over. We sand all surfaces to be glued 
because you've got to create that too. So you really get a good chemical bond between the plastics, especially since we're joining ABS to ABS. ABS glue would work great in this situation too. I just don't want to clamp it and wait 24 hours to keep working on it. So all that sanded, be sure to kind of wipe it off, make sure the excess is off. And I've sanded through and through there. We know that I am, I'm not even gonna do pencil marks. Let me just do an eyeball estimation. That looks like a great area to put glue in. All through here, just glue it up. Use the glue like it's going out of style. And we, um, squirt the applicate, the accelerator on right here. And let's get her in. It's nice and sloppy. While we're at it, we got room, we got gaps. Spray it, make sure it cures. Do the same thing to the other side. Let's get a quick measurement here. We're about where do we want it. That, all, that whole area looks good. Go up top. Pre-spray the accelerator. Watch your fingers here. Spray it down, make sure it's all going to get cured. Those are absolutely not going anywhere. All right, so we made tabs, but it's got to fit into a 90 degree. So I'm going to cut it now so that we can get the correct orientation to just slide over and glue in place. Our handy dandy fist scars brought to you by Lowe's. Cutting a 90 degree tab. 90 degree tab. POTD, and just make things like even and parallel, why not? <clears throat> Waste not, what not there. Test fit, test fit, test fit, in case we need to do any sanding, trimming, anything else to it. No, that's all working pretty good right there. We're all, we're all good here. How are you? All right, I am happy. Um, I'm gonna sand this a little flush. I wonder if I could trim it with the snippers first, though. That's easier. Yeah, let's just trim this little spot right here. I don't mind leaving a gap, even if we need to use some filler, because we're probably going to use some filler anyway. And better safe than sorry. You know, it's a lot easier to trim material away. It's a lot harder to add it. But since we're working with plastic, and super glue and accelerator and if you want to get baking soda in the mix you're golden that is the realm of prop building that actually fits a lot better but i need to trim this tooth down here this is why we do test fits test 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 um i do need okay i do need you to refer to the uh, crl and images there's supposed to be a little score mm -hmm. run across it you need to go look at some pictures of it pull up the crl and look at that picture uh the dremel tool will do it uh you're just going to want to mark out like using um masking tape okay. so that you know where to go and measure it out to the right angles <clears throat> little details you have to do for the thermal detonator all right trimmed it up and test fitted all right, I am very, very, very pleased with what I'm seeing here because that's what it looked like before. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. All right, I am still pleased with what I'm seeing here even though I do see some additional trimming that will be necessary. It's no big deal whatsoever. 
All right, let's get this thing sanded and glued in place. And yes, I am not going to glue it the wrong way. That would just be absolutely terrible and disastrous. But I have done silly things like that before in the past when I was building my Shore Trooper before uh, Celebration 2017 in Orlando. I had accidentally put my straps on my Shore Trooper calf, vice versa. And um, Luckily, I think I had the machine heated up. I was able, and I had straps on the shelf. I was able to form another kit and finish it in a total of 45 minutes. I mean, it was a super fast speed build with the way I did it, but it worked. And I ended up selling that suit a while back, and I, you know, hope that it's at a very happy home. Uh, it was a very good set of armor. I hate having to sell my personal sets of armor, but. That not touch. Okay, we had a we missed a spot here. We did get it on the wearing left side though. Ah, I got super glue on me. Don't do that. No, 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 no. There we go. There we go. That's better. There we go. Much better. Oh. Now it's time to take care of some of the gaps and some filling. So that's how it's supposed to be, give or take. I've still got some gaps right here and some areas that I can cut and trim, make it look prettier. I'm gonna run these over the belt sander because I'm just better at it. I'll smooth that angle off. So I put another piece of plastic behind here and then we will fill these gaps. So be right back. Alrighty, I am back from the belt sander from evening up the sides a wee bit. Sorry about the noise. Alright, and now I'm going to cut a couple of tiny little strips of plastic, support the interior, test fit a couple little pieces here, and we're going to fill the gap. Yeah, that'll I can work with that. 
So I just cut a little piece of plastic and I'm basically spot welding it with super glue and accelerator here. These plastics are awesome. And I'm doing this to bridge it. Like think if you're doing auto body work, that's essentially all this really is. Just kind of on a smaller scale. that's filled that slot in nicely. I'm going to do the same thing over here. It's a little piece of plastic to bridge it, build it up a little. Slightly angled, so you put a little bend in it. Ah! Put a little bend in it right there. This side really doesn't need much. I'd rather put it... This is all at your discretion here. Yeah, that's a good spot. I, I know I can't like show a close up of this, but it's an eyeball thing, you know. You just gotta see it, know it, put your fingers there, glue it down. Trust me, if you mess anything up, it can be fixed. It's not a big deal. Okay, that's in place. Tap down the other side. That's nice and tacked. All right. Um, for the 10 foot rule, that would pass. I mean, you're not going to have any real issues with all the black all around you in a photograph, anyone seeing that. But I'm still going to come in here and fill these lines real quick. And we're just going to do it with the super glue and accelerator. This is a butt joint. Usually you could use Bondo or like Evercoat. Um, uh, sorry, the po Polyflex, Evercoat Polyflex. That's one of our materials of choice, but this is just a real small gap. And it's just faster to go ahead and get the super glue in there and sand it down for your final product. Also demonstrates just how good the 2P10 really is. Um, the Bob Smith Super Glue is pretty good too. It's just these come in these giant bottles that are really convenient with the tips and everything. They're only about $35 for this big, big bottle, and I put a lot of armor together with this puppy. So, actually, not that much armor, probably two and a half, three sets, give or take. We keep many bottles around here, it's a constant supply. So that was second application on that side, the second application on this side. And uh, when you're applying this heavy, yes, sometimes it can stay uncured underneath it because it is degassing. Um, when I'm doing that, I try not to want to touch it too early. If I do, don't touch it with your fingers. Just kind of get a quick wipe off and then spray it again if anything came out and kind of wipe it off again. And that should take care of it. This side should be cured, kind of maybe demonstrate that right there. Yeah, same deal. So we filled the gap. Ah. Um, now I got this inside gap where we put the little support piece of plastic. We just want to kind of make this look like it has a big return edge. And that was one of the main reasons for that support piece of plastic was just to recreate and blend everything together. It's auto body work in miniature. One application, here comes a second. Good stuff there. Check this side, it's not much easier to do too. Hardly anything to really put in. Actually, it's pretty much filled. I'm just going to put some here because I can sand it off easily. Just in case. Never know.
Hi, Wolfgang. Yes, yeah, still here. Um, for about another 50 minutes, give or take, 45 minutes. I'm uh, going to finish up this tutorial here real quick um, and get that video uploading for my son and because uh, we've been doing this little conversion. Um, all right, next step for the conversion is to sand all the filling that we did. So let's see what we have. You know, I've worn the tar out of this four piece of sandpaper, but uh, it's still got a few good spots. I don't have any sandpaper handy. So here we go. Just I think it's just 120 that's on here. For the noise sorry for the noise okay and that just demonstrates the power of really what this super glue can do as a filler it is quite awesome um i'm 90 percent pleased with it i got a couple more spots that i could hit one tiny little pinhole actually, i should need to sand that a little bit more but i do need to sand that uh get a little bit in there real quick it'll mostly be hidden by the canister i'm just being very anal about it And that's how you stick a super glue bottle to your hand. Oh yeah, washing my hands with acetone here soon. Uh -huh. All right, let that cure up. I'm gonna keep working sand in here. I really do need some more sandpaper, but this will be okay. <laughs> Super glue on the outside of this bottle. That was bad. That should be good enough now. That's it. After the second application, 
that's really all we needed to do for the um, trauma plate conversion right here. That is set and ready to go. Let me compare it to the molded one. So we have our molded trauma plate on, on, well, my right, and the converted trauma plate on my left. So if you, uh, in the time that that took, you know, you could have a fully upgraded suit with just some scrap plastic and uh, some super glue. And as always, I recommend painting it anyway, so don't worry about any of this. Further beyond here, I do normal steps, sand that down with some 220, get a little finer grit, and so forth, so on. Oh, here comes our awkward closing statement for when Logan edits this video. So let's make it a good one this time. Come on, give me a round of applause. Come on, I got to do a good one this time. All righty, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that this uh, tutorial conversion was very helpful to many of you out there. And we will see you next time. Be sure to hit all of the buttons that everybody asks you to hit. But more importantly, have fun building your kit. So we will see you later. Bye. And we're still here. So. Uh, actually, let me kill the recording, though, and get that uploading for him. So what was the issue? Um, oh, because of the space? No. Big Sorry. I was away. No. Where this is located was the issue. Okay. Okay? Right. In the suits from 2016 up until it pulled off the mold and I repositioned it up here. Okay. Um, since the last black run of plastic we had, at least, these have been the standard trauma plates. It happened like mid-run. Um, this is just the conversion that people had come up with because some GMLs were picky about where that was. Yeah. So that's all it takes. And um, here y'all can see too while we're here, you can put the little hash marks in for the uh, thermal detonator. Hopefully I'll write a new model file for this soon and just have it modeled in so we don't have to worry about it. Should I attach this? No. You need to sand the holy crap out of that thing and use filler putty and uh, out of this. You've got to sand 3D print lines out as much as you can. Use uh, combi putty to fix all of the print lines and stuff. Okay. And then hit it with filler primer, sand it, filler primer, sand it, and then filler it, primer. and then you set it to the side. Okay. Um, <clears throat> because it gets attached after the armor gets the first layer of primer on it. Gotcha. Because you're priming it with a different substance, and the bulldog primer that we use will eat away at any primer you put on gotcha. uh, beforehand. That's very bad. Don't mix your primers. Oh, who else is here? Who else is here? Hello there, Awkward Gamer. Hi, Awkward Gamer. I, uh, uh, you're about to witness something awesome. A man washing his hands with can of acetone. I'll try to keep the pain to a minimum again, but I got super glue all over my hands from it running down the bottle earlier. It happens. So when applying the clips here, hmm? you the you're going to do just the nylon. That's it. No, no buckles. No buckles. Glue it directly down there okay. and sand that area where you're going to glue it. Uh, glue around the out, glue, yeah. glue a strip to glue down the edge. After it's secured, bring it back and glue it up that way, all the way up. And then you're going to want to retain it on the edges too. You know, make a little border. Mm -hmm. it's, once it's on there, it will not come off. Because you're going to be cinching that down from the back, and that's what's going to wrap around your stomach. A lot of people pull these out of their kits, and I'll show them too here. And they think, oh, that's way too big for me. It's like you're not understanding. It's plastic. It's flexible. We leave a little bit of a return edge 
here so that that's not as pliable. If you need it to bend more, then by all means, cut off the return edge completely and you'll get a full bend, except for this part here, a little bit of heat gun, whatnot. But yeah, even on, on my lardy bottom, it, can, it cinches in. And then you're gonna have all the padding and layers from the tabards and everything else. So yeah, mm -hmm. for here. Um, yeah, they, okay. Here, here, and yeah. Alright, here comes the pain. The pain. <sighs> oh. Yeah, we will be cutting off the stream in roughly half an hour. Uh we got some appointments to take care of this afternoon. Ah, belt sander cut from earlier. Ow. But we will take some Q&A right now. I'm tired. I don't think there's any more work I'm going to really be able to get done here. I'm working all weekend anyway. Probably not live streaming, though. Um, depends on what I end, actually end up doing. We have to confirm if we have the help that we think we have coming in or not. And if they're coming in, then that's awesome because we're going to do a lot more backforming to finish clearing out our white stuff so we can move on to our black ABS, get all you guys cleared out there. And uh, Glenn's probably going to be here building out the paint booth a bit more. we got a ways to go on it, but it's going to be awesome when it's done. we got the fans. We're probably going to have to go rent a welder and get some strap or angle iron and we got to weld the door closed because of a bad seal and we have to cut away the retention bars that actually hold the door just so we can install the air in fan. So, you know, doing it really cautiously and well and right after we get that done, uh, we'll be doing a little bit of foam insulation because it's really in the hottest corner of our building. It's the southwest side, so it stays really hot over there. Um, so a little insulation on the top and on the outside will go a long way and then we're going to run the electricity and sheetrock and uh, air hoses it's going to be fun a lot of work ahead of us but it would be very nice to have that booth right there because we're going to be painting red here very very soon as soon as we finish up with the Sith Trooper when I was speaking of having a nice new printer coming in, here's your little tidbit right now. We're reprinting the Sith Trooper helmet on that printer in ABS, vapor smoothing it and molding it on our brand new Rotocast machine that's being built right now too. There's a reason we've been waiting for a while to get the Sith Trooper done is because I want it to be perfect. It's the last full body set of armor that I'm doing before I move on to our next project. And that's a legacy thing. So two people listening to me ramble. <laughs> Thanks. So this will be published for the whole world to see afterwards. Well, that wasn't as owie as I thought it would be, but I definitely feel where every single cut is on my hands right now. Lots on the tips, lots on the sides. That wasn't for it. All right, I guess we're going to just close out this video for the day then. Nobody's popping in. I guess everybody had a busy Friday as usual. So um, thanks for tuning in for everybody that did tune in and uh, listening to us ramble and do whatnot. We'll see you later.